Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren and I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. Happy New Year, this is my first YouTube video of 2023 and in this video I wanted to chat to you a bit about some common sewing myths or misbeliefs that I have heard just by talking to customers in the shop or questions that have been sent on social media or in my Instagram lives as well and instead of talking to you about New Year's resolutions which to be honest I'm not a huge fan of I feel like it's maybe a bit too much like forced pressure and if you sew and you do dressmaking as a hobby it should be fun and you should never feel like you have to do it or that you you have to do anything related to it you should do it because you want to do it and because it's really good fun and I think sometimes when you sort of force yourself to make resolutions then it can kind of take the edge of fun out of it a little bit so I have grouped the these sort of myths or disbeliefs about sewing and dressmaking into four different categories categories and it might be that you relate to some of them or maybe you've chatted to someone else who kind of feels the same way or maybe you actually do some sewing or dressmaking and none of your close friends do so you might sort of think these things but then not have anybody to chat to them about so then sometimes they can get sort of you know it can just kind of cloud your judgment a little bit and really what I want to do is try and help you to reframe some of these things see it from a different point of view so it might help you or maybe it might help someone else you know and um, or it might help when you're just like seeing posts on Instagram or social media or whatever just so that um, we can all just support each other in the best way that we can in the best positive way that we can because yeah sewing and dressmaking should be fun. So the first category that I wanted to chat about is the time situation and generally not having enough time. So it might be that you feel like you just don't have enough time for sewing or you might feel like you're really slow at sewing so it kind of puts you off a little bit or you might kind of think oh I only I can only manage to sew like one thing every couple of months or like a couple of things a year but everybody else seems to be sewing like lots and lots of different things. Um, or it might be that you think you maybe don't have time to make a toile before you make something. Um, and really what I would say in terms of the context of the time beliefs that you might have about sewing is that I would say like generally for most things that aren't like completely necessary for like general everyday function, life, you know, job, house stuff, whatever, other sort of commitments or things that you might have in your life, you know, we don't we don't really have time for anything in this kind of fast paced busy society environment world whatever that we live in right now you kind of have to make time which means that you really have to sort of look at what you do and how you spend your time and maybe reprioritizing some of those things and I because I love sewing so much I do make time for it in my day I'm really busy running the business and I do get to sew as part of running the business as well but I do like to do my own personal sewing too and I regularly have to just prioritize doing other jobs or other activities if I do really want to do a bit of sewing so um, and also in terms of the the belief maybe about comparing yourself to others or thinking like I'm quite slow at sewing or I can't really sew things that that fast or I can't really make garments that quickly and um, at the same rate as maybe you see other people making them is that you know a friendly reminder just that whatever you see online is always the highlights of someone's life it is the very small snippet of the thing and you know everybody has lots of other things going on in their life so it's best not to compare yourself to other people but which I'm sure you know anyway but sometimes it's just nice to get a little reminder of that too so the next category that I wanted to chat to you about is maybe some like sewing rules that you've sort of self-imposed on yourself. So for example, that you have to trace all of your patterns rather than just cutting into the pattern before you make it. Now, I used to do this all the time and I guess it was because my mum did it. Now, the reason that my mum did it was because she was a dressmaker and she made clothes for other people. She did a lot of bridal wear and that kind of thing. And I guess she wanted to like be able to like reuse her patterns that she had. So I just always sort of saw her tracing um, and or, or like trying to, to, to preserve all the sizes that are in a pattern. I just thought like, that's what you do. That's what you've got to do. And I, and I always traced, but it does take quite a lot of time to trace. And I would really ask you to challenge yourself what is like the 
what is the sort of worst case scenario that you are kind of thinking is going to happen if you don't trace and can that easily be sort of rectified and how does how does dealing with that weigh up against the time it's going to take to trace something so for example if you're thinking like oh you know I might I might need another size in the future I might need a different size maybe think about how realistic it is going to be that you're going to want to make that exact garment in a different size in the future what are the ch- what are the chances of that happening and if, and if the chances are quite small that you would need those other sizes again then I would say it's probably better if you just don't worry about it because the worst case is and the small chance that you might need that pattern again you might have to buy it again or if it's a PDF, and this is why PDFs I find are really good, they're my favourite type of patterns, is that you could just get it printed again, you know. Which, yeah, I know it's an expense, but it's an expense that you might not even need to have versus all the time it's going to take to trace it out just now. So it's just, you know, everybody's situation is going to be different, and but it's just something to maybe consider if you've just got this blanket rule, like, oh, I must trace everything. Try and ask yourself really why you want to do that and what what would be the worst that would happen if you didn't trace it and and how would you cope with that. Um, the next self-imposed rule that you might have is that you feel like you need to finish a project before you start a new one. Now, I've done a lot of knitting in the past, I still do, and lots of sewing as well. And I've generally got quite a few projects on the go, but sometimes I do get this sort of like mental brain block where if I've got a project in my head, I'm like, I need to complete it before I can do anything else. And it can actually really sort of like stave or inhibit your kind of creativity or enthusiasm about doing your sewing, your hobby, your dressmaking. If you feel like you have to make this thing before you do anything else. And I think as soon as you start to feel those kind of negative associations with a project, I would say it's best just to like leave it alone because you want to keep sewing as your happy space and your like nice time like away from normal life to kind of relax and enjoy yourself. You don't want to be feeling like, oh, I have to do this project before I do anything else. So I would just, if you, if you do feel like that, I would just suggest that you maybe challenge yourself again a bit on that and, and really think, you know, is it, is it benefiting me? to force myself to finish this project before I start a new one or is it actually sort of like just bringing my creativity and my my inspiration and excitement about sewing down a little bit. The next one might be that you feel like you need to make a toile before you make the real thing and I think this can be quite quite an in-depth sort of chat and there's lots of different scenarios here that can play out when you feel like you need to make a toile I do actually have a separate video and blog post that is about making a toile, how you do it, why you would do it, why you wouldn't do it, um, all of that sort of thing. So if you do have this feeling like I always have to make a toile and you're like really sort of force that on yourself, I would suggest maybe you have a look at my other video just so that you can try to kind of maybe think about things a little bit differently in that sense or maybe understand really the reasons why you're doing it rather than just feeling like you have to and you don't really know why you're doing it. Um, the next one might be, now this is for those of you that are maybe quite new in your dressmaking journey, is that you have to sew, if you're a beginner, that you have to sew really basic things like napkins or cushion covers or <laughs> um, that kind of thing. And I would say that that is not really strictly true. If you've got your heart set on making garments, then you're probably going to get bored quite quickly and maybe even put off sewing if you make things that don't really interest you like cushion covers or napkins or whatever something really simple if it is garments that you want to make then by all means make a garment to begin with i would probably say a pair of pajama bottoms is quite good or a simple skirt or something there's loads of really easy beginner entry level garments that you can make Um, But I think you just need to be prepared and open-minded that, you know, the first garments that you make are not, might not be totally perfect, they might not fit totally perfectly, you know, but, but that's part of the learning process, it's okay, don't be hard on yourself, 
just be just be open to the mistakes and learn from them um, and you will you know the, the more you practice the more you do the more mistakes you make the quicker you will progress in your sewing and dressmaking journey and um, this next one and this happens to me as well so you know but it's just your friendly reminder maybe to challenge it is that you feel like the fabric that you've got is too good to cut into I've got fabrics like that in my stash as well that are like years and years old and, I, and I'm like no I'm just waiting for like the exact pattern to come together or you know I just don't know quite what I want to do with it yet. What I would suggest that you do if, if you've got fabric that you feel like that that you don't want to cut into it because you're worried it's going to go wrong or whatever your reasons are you don't want to cut into it that's fine but what I do think you should consider doing instead is celebrating it in some other way. So maybe display the fabric in like your sewing area or have it out somewhere where you can look at it frequently or maybe even put it in one of your drawers where your clothes are just so that you can see it on a regular basis if you love it and you enjoy looking at it then you can get pleasure out of it just by being a fabric somewhere because if it's just shut in a cupboard somewhere or hiding under a bed or whatever you know that's no fun for you you don't really get to see the fabric and it's no fun for the fabric either because it's not really living out its purpose of being anything it's just kind of shoved somewhere so if you really feel like you can't cut into it yet I would suggest positioning it somewhere else in your life that you can enjoy it as just a piece of fabric. Okay, the next group of things that you might sort of that might sort of resonate with you a little bit are what I've what I've labeled the self-imposed guilt trip. So this is where maybe you're going to think like I can't buy any more fabric or I want a fabric buying ban or I've got too much already so I can't possibly get any more or that you feel maybe you feel guilt about the amount of sewing stuff that you have or the amount of fabric or you feel like you need to hide things from someone else in your life purchases or deliveries of fabric that come and I, I would say this is pretty common so if you do feel like this you're definitely not alone but what I what I would sort of suggest that you kind of think about or consider is that if you if you are feeling like this and you're putting a lot of guilt on yourself about the amount of stuff that you have is that you you maybe start to look towards ways or think about ways that you could that you could organize what you have a little bit more maybe clear some things out if you know that there's fabrics or supplies or items that you're just never going to use or that you did like once but now you're not so sure about them is just to you know move them on to some somewhere else either give them to a friend or if you're in a sewing group you might have a fabric fabric swap or charity shop or it might be you could some people have d stash sales on instagram or ebay or whatever you could try to try to move on in that that way as well because i think if you're if you're feeling like that like i've got too much stuff i can't buy any more I, I think sometimes that can sort of just dampen down your creativity your spark to sew something as well and that actually if you just reorganized things or cleared some things out then when you do see something new then it may just help that sort of spark of creativity flow again and then you know you're on your way then you're making something else you make something new you make something with your stash and it just kind of gets the flow going a little bit more rather than feeling like stagnant and that you're just kind of stuck in this place because you feel guilty about the amount of stuff that you have but you're not actually doing anything with it so again it's just like trying to sort of become unstuck out of these thoughts or sort of these feelings that you might have about the things that you've the things that you've got the last group is all about confidence or maybe that you're lacking confidence so it might be that maybe you feel like you don't have the skills or the the ability or the experience or knowledge or whatever to complete a certain project and this is again this is going to be quite a subjective sort of personal thing for everyone but i would say that if you're really like stopping yourself from doing something and you because you're telling yourself i'm just not skilled enough to do that yet it's going to really slow down the rate at how you can progress your skills and you can improve them because everybody has to do something for the first time the first time you know you're not just going to wake up one day and like magically know how to do these things you just need to be open to making mistakes in the learning process and things feeling hard but trying to 
trying to see the benefit and the joy in that of making mistakes and learning new things because the great thing about sewing and dressmaking is, is that there always is something new to learn, a different way to do things, a different technique, a different fabric and that's what makes it really exciting. Um, so if you're, if you're holding yourself back because you feel like mm, I just don't think I'm good enough yet, I would say you probably surprise yourself at what you can achieve if you just have, have a little bit of patience, you're not hard on yourself and you just give yourself a chance to, to, to go for it and give it a go. Now, it may also be that maybe, I've heard this quite a few times on my Instagram live chats or people that have come into the shop as well, is that people feel like they don't want to make something yet because they feel like their body shape they want their body shape to change or they want their they want how they how they feel about their body to change or you might, it might be that you feel like you want to lose weight or put on weight or just change change your body proportions in some way so therefore you don't want to make a garment of clothing now because then it might not suit you in the future and um, now I would say that that this that is totally valid and of course, you know, everybody's allowed to feel like that. But I would suggest that you just open your mind a little bit to if you did make something for yourself now, as you are right now, and that that would, that would bring you pleasure and joy to make that and to wear something that was comfortable or that did actually fit you right in the moment and it would give you that little confidence boost that you, that you need, then, you know, just maybe live in the moment a little bit more with it and, and get pleasure out of the moment rather than sort of holding yourself back because you're waiting for something else to happen or hoping something else is going to change. Um, the other thing is is that you might feel maybe like you're not confident in taking your own measurements as well so picking the right size you might find that a challenge or that that's sort of holding you back as you think, I don't, you know, I'm not confident in my measurements, I'm not confident in picking a size to make. And so therefore I'm just not really going to do it. And that's really common as well, especially when you first start making garments, it can feel like a bit of a minefield. You can get a lot of, a lot of misses, some hits, and it's all, that's all part of the learning process as well. So I do have another video and blog post that goes into much more depth about taking your measurements, what they mean, how to interpret your measurements on the size charts that come with patterns to help you pick a size that is going to be best suited to your body measurements. So if, you, if that is something that you feel like is kind of getting you stuck in a place from actually starting something, then I would suggest that you check that out just to sort of kind of broaden your broaden your awareness of different things that you might want to think about when you're picking a size and just just understand it a little bit more so I hope that you have found some of those suggestions useful I can appreciate that it's like a really sort of personal and unique thing you know it might be that some you, you know you think some of them are like yeah that's totally me I always do that or it might you might be like I'm not sure but you know, every, everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's on their own journey. Um, and really, I want my message to be, don't be hard on yourself. Please remember it's supposed to be fun, sewing and dressmaking. And if you're finding that it's not fun, then, and you want it to be fun again, then maybe thinking about some of the reasons why you're not finding it fun and just sort of challenging those beliefs or looking at them from a different way might just help those creative juices flow again and get you back on track sewing. If you do have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, you can always get in contact with um, the, the team and me at the shop as well. You can call us, you can email us. Um, I'll put the contact details in the description to this video as well. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video and I'll see you soon. Bye.